this morning. His spirit is thick in this place this morning. And uh, I'm just so thankful. I, I never never take for granted when, when I can be in his presence. Amen. And uh, we've already been in the presence of God this morning. But there's more that he wants to do in this place. I promise you, because I, I still feel a need in this house this morning. And, and I say a need. I believe that there's multiple in this place this morning. God wants to minister to those needs this morning. Amen. As, uh, as Brother Lee mentioned earlier, we are so glad to have Brother Cam and Lindsey Brown with us this morning. Amen. And Cam, the last time that, that he was here, he preached for us and did an awesome job. And uh, we're going to have him come back and minister to us uh, sometime, hopefully in the near future. But for some reason, and I don't know why, he told me last time that he wanted to hear me preach. And uh, so you'll be able to check your box, and, uh, and then this will be good after today. So, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's funny, uh, Brother Lee had mentioned that they were at a conference uh, this past week. And Cam texted me, I think it was maybe Wednesday or something like that, Tuesday, something like that. And uh, he said, he said, do you know a, a Zach Hammond? And I said, hey. I said, I don't just know him. I'm kin to him. He's like, man, we just met him up at this conference. And him and his daddy. And he said, we, we heard him you know, speak. And he said, man, he said, they, they were awesome. So I had to go ahead and let him know last night. I said, you know what? Don't expect the same thing from me. Because, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I am not Tim and Zach Hammond. But, uh. Boy, I am, I am blessed to, to come from a family of, of ministers. We've got a lot of people that serve in the ministry uh, throughout our family. And it's just a, it's a blessing. And it's a blessing to leave that kind of, you know, legacy for your family. And um, that's why it's so important that, you know, you don't just talk it here, but you walk it out there. And that they see it in the homes. And it's not just some kind of facade or a show that you put on. Um, one of the greatest compliments that I've ever received is that I'm, I'm pretty much, I would say for the most part, the same person right here that I am outside those doors. Um, and, and that is a great compliment that, that I took as a compliment, um, unless they thought that I was pretty bad up here. So uh, maybe it was back in the compliment, I don't know. So, uh, but you know what, I took it the way I took it, and that's all that matters. Um, but uh, we are so thankful to have you all this morning. Thank you for being with us. Amen. Um, also, and I hope this is okay, Brother, Brother Paul Smith, is that correct? Y'all might remember this, but Paul Smith was on our prayer list for a long time. He was in the hospital with an aneurysm, and he wasn't looking good. But God moved in his life, and he's here with us. Let's give God some praise here. Come on, man. That's a miracle right here. I don't care what anybody says. We still serve a God who is in the wonder working, miracle working business. And we are so thankful to have you all with us this morning. Thank you to all of our guests that are in the house this morning. And uh, as we say to all of our guests, yes, welcome home to Mount Pleasant Community Church. We want this to be a place where you can come as you are, you can be yourself, and we can all grow together in Christ. Amen. And uh, I, I'm just so excited about this morning. Um, Brother Eric made me a compliment yesterday, and he, he might not have even known it. But uh, he asked me, because we met up for supper last night with, with him and Cameron and Lindsay. And he, said, uh, he said, you seem happy. He said, but normally I feel like you're a little happier after Georgia wins than, than you are right now. And I said, brother, I said, I'm extremely happy. I said, but one thing that's kind of happened over the years is that my emotions don't feed off of like Georgia football and, and material things like that. Because I've got so much to be happy about that God has given me. And every day is a blessing. Amen. And, you know, the, the things that, that truly, if you want to see, like, the biggest smile on my face, it's, it's when, you know, somebody gets a prayer answer. Or when, you know, somebody gets, you know, deliverance. Or somebody comes up and says, hey, can you baptize me? Can you baptize me? And, and, and it's not about me. It's about God. And it's not what God's doing. And uh, 
you know, I might be the one holding the mic this morning, but I want, I want the words to be coming from God this morning. So y'all, y'all help, help pray with me, help me through this message, and uh, we're going to get through it. Um, this, this could be a difficult message for, for some people, but I want it to be an encouraging message. You know, I mentioned that about the compliment a while ago that somebody gave me, and I said that's the way that I took it. You know, a lot of things that, that we receive, it's all in how we take it. That's one reason why I tell you, I, I told Brother Lee before the service this morning, he said, I don't know if you text me what you just told me. He said, I'm sorry, I have my phone on mine. I said, well, I would rather really communicate face to face. Anyways, because so much can get lost in translation through a text message. You know, because you, you're not hearing the tone, but you read it a certain way, don't you? And you kind of read it with a tone. And sometimes that tone that you read it in may not be the same tone that the person intended to have when they send the text. So that's why I do. I love, I love calling you know people on the phone and talking to them. And uh, my my favorite is face to face because we get face to face. That means I get to hug you, I get to love on you, sweat on you because I'm sweating right now. But uh, man, God is just so good. So. If, uh, if you got your Bibles with you this morning, let's turn to Psalms 84. Psalms 84. And we're going to be starting in verse 5. Psalms 84, verse 5. All right, if you got it in your word, say amen. All right, let's get into the word this morning. It says, blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Now, I don't know about y'all, but... I want to be blessed. Does anybody in here not want to be blessed? Good. We're all on the same page. Then. All right. So I want to be somebody that's blessed. And it says here that blessed is the man whose strength is in you. And David is talking about blessed is the man whose strength is in the Lord. Whose strength is in Jesus. Whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Now, when I hear that word pilgrimage, I'm going to be honest, this is the little kid inside me, I start to think about Thanksgiving. I start to think about, you know, in elementary school, we used to make the little Indian hats, you know, with the you know, paper and had a little feather and we made the little pilgrim hats and, you know, it was a good time. You know, uh, those were fun times for me. Um, and it, it's funny how holidays change the older you get, right? Um, but I'm still a, like a big kid at heart, so that's what I think of when I think of you know, pilgrims. Um, that word pilgrimage there, pilgr pilgrimage means a journey to look for something new or personal trans transformation. A journey to look for something new. Now, here's the thing is that that, that sounds pretty awesome, right? Because, you know, all y'all said y'all wanted to be blessed. How many of y'all like new stuff? Becky, you like new stuff? A few? One, two, three? Excellent. All right. So we've got a few in here that like new stuff. I like new stuff so much that like, I like, like when I get a new pair of shoes, the way that they smell. <laughs> or like, a, you know, like, like a, uh, something leather or something like that. Like, I, I love it. I love that kind of stuff. You know, New stuff can be awesome, but in order to go get the new stuff sometimes, you have to cross over a line. And you have to, to set on a new path to get new blessings. And a new path can be something that can be very scary sometimes. You know, I can't imagine, you know, when the pilgrims came over, you know, that there had to be a, a little bit of fear, I think, inside of them that, hey, you know, we're getting out of these waters. We don't know what we're going to get into. We don't know, we don't know what we're, you know, going to experience once we get over there. But you know what? They did it anyways. 
And the reason they did it was because they were trying to find religious freedom. Trying to find religious freedom. Trying to find a place where they could serve God just the way they wanted to. And where they were, they weren't finding that. And so they set out on this pilgrimage. And I want you to know this morning that, that God, he's, he's got something new for you. He wants to do something new in each and every single one of our lives. It says that he's got new blessings every day. But we've got to be able to step out of our comfort zone and walk a new path in order to get those new blessings. Because, you know, we can't get new blessings by doing the same old stuff. We can't. You've got to set on that new path. And it's so important that we understand that, yes, you know, it may be scary. Yes, you know, you might be, you know, setting out into the unknown. But God's going to be right there in the midst with you every single way. Every single part of that journey, He's going to be right there with you. And I love here it says in verse 6, it says, as they pass through the valley of Baca. Now, that's kind of a, a weird, you know, sound of word right there, Baca. You know, I, I'm not going to lie, this is the kid in me as well. When I read it the first time, I started thinking about Chewbacca. You know, <laughs> and, you know. But I'm one of those type of people, Brother Eric, that... I like to know the, the meanings of things because so many of these words in the word, they mean something that you might not have ever even known. But it says here as they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. That sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? They got springs. They got rain that's, you know, covered with some pools and stuff like that. You know, that sounds like a good time. You know, we love hanging around the pool, right? Yes. Well, let me tell you what Baca means. Baca means tears or weeping. That's what it means. So literally, you were talking about the valley of tears and weeping. The valley of brokenness. The valley of loss. The valley of grief. The valley of hurt. But God says that there's going to be strength to strength. Even right there in the valley. You know, I begin to think about that song. It says that the same God that's on the mountain is the God that's in the valley. And you know what? You've got to go through that valley. You've got to go through that, that hard, those hard times and that brokenness, you know, at times to get to where God is trying to take you to those new blessings. So this morning, I want to speak to you for just a moment on blessed through brokenness. Blessed through brokenness. Brother Eric, do you mind saying a prayer of our message this morning? Lord, we love you this morning. We praise you. Lord, thank you for your presence that we've already felt. Lord, we felt it from the beginning until now. Lord, I pray that you use our pastor this morning to speak to us. Lord. You speak to us. Let us know what you want us to hear. Leave this place, Lord. Let us be doers of the word, not hearers of it. Jesus, mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> <laughs> Just a joke, guys. Just a joke. Y'all won't start throwing stones yet. All right. Now, I would imagine, you know, a valley of brokenness or a valley of tears or weeping. Honestly, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be real with you. I know what the verse says. It says, they make it a spring and the rain also comes at the pools. But when I hear, you know, hey, you got to go through the valley of brokenness, I don't want to go there. I really don't. But unfortunately, sometimes that's the only way. That's the only way to get to where God is trying to take you. But we've got to understand that God is not intending, you, intending for you to remain in that valley. He's not looking for you to set up a campsite down there. He's looking for you to pass through. Because it says there as they pass through the valley of Baca. It didn't say they were going to remain there. It says they were going through. You know, it says in Isaiah 43 and 2, it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, 
you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Because I'm telling you right now that just like those Hebrew, Hebrew boys that were in that fire, God was right there in the fire with them. God didn't say, hey, y'all come on out of the fire. I got you. No, God got right there in the midst with them and said, hey, I'm here with y'all. Y'all don't have to worry. You know, you don't have to be afraid because I'm not going to let you go. And I know it might seem scary, but we're coming out and it says, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. We serve a, a mighty God. We serve a God that, as I mentioned before, He can, he can do anything as long as we allow Him to. See, I've said many times before that God is as big as we make Him. He's also as small as we make Him. And we've got to understand that we serve a God that loves us. You know, so many times I hear people, you know, preach. And, and I can understand why some people, you know, might, might leave a service scared or something like that. Because, you know, they almost get this image that, you know, there's this big bad God just waiting to strike us with a lightning bolt. You know, when we mess up. That's not the God we serve. You know, I know that the word talks about wrath and stuff like that, but you know, you got to go really, really extreme to push the wrath of God. I'm talking about really extreme. You know, the God I serve is the God of love. He's the God that when you make a mistake, that you know what, you don't have to call him or wait on him. All you got to do is look up, and he's right there, and he's already got his hand down saying, hey, just give me your hand. I'm ready to pull you up. But so many times, so many times, we get inside of our own feelings and we just want to remain right there in that brokenness. When God's trying to call you out of that place, He's trying to call you out of that darkness into His marvelous light. Some of us, some of us, you might be, not be in the darkness completely, but you've got some things in your life that are still in the dark, that you've hid deep down inside. You know, I began to think as I was studying for this message that, that I've had, you know, different times in my life that I wanted to go, you know, use a tool or, or you know, do something. And when I got ready to use it, it wouldn't work. And I didn't even realize it was broken. I wonder how many of us are in this place this morning that, that maybe you came in here and, and, and maybe, you know, you put on a smile. You know, maybe you, you, you acted like you had joy. But deep down inside, there's something that you've hid for maybe years. And for somebody to look at you, they wouldn't even know that you're broken. But you are. It's time to get real. Because God doesn't intend for you to carry around that brokenness. That's right. He wants to make you well, and He wants to make you whole. He wants to take those broken pieces, and He wants to put them back together. Yes. And I don't know what you know what what the brokenness might be. You know it. You know it, it could be you know broken heart, you know broken mind, broken marriage, broken habits. You know I don't know, but God knows. And that's all that matters, that God knows. Yeah. You know, I tell you all the time, you know, if you come to me and ask me to pray for you over something, I'm not going to sit there and ask you all the details. Mm -hmm. If you want to share the details with me, that's fine. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's really none of my business. The one that needs to know about it, he knows already. That's right, that's right. And we can join together yeah. and pray together. Because it says where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst. And I want you to know this morning that he's in this place. We've already felt him. We've already felt him in this place, but there's more. There's more that God wants to do in this house this morning. You know, and so many times, you know, we don't understand that God has to take us through that fire. He has to take us through that brokenness so that he can put us back the way that he intends us to be. You know, I begin to think about, you know, it talked about that fire 
in that verse right there. And I begin to think about, you know, you know, how everybody, you know, they, they like, you know, things that are, are made of gold, you know, and shiny and stuff like that. And, you know, that gold, it has to go through what's called a refiner's fire. And that refiner, the person that's doing it, the refiner knows how long that gold needs to remain in that fire to become pure. And God, he's got you right there. And yes, you may be in the fire. And you might not be understanding, why am I still in this? You know, even if you've said, you know, God, you know, I'm ready to come out of this. God knows exactly how long you need to be in there to make pure. And he wants to make you pure, pure this morning. You know, the potter, when it's shaping, you know, that, that you know, jar or whatever it is, you know, that it's, that it's making, you know, a cup, whatever. The potter knows how long the clay needs to stay on that wheel to shape it. And we've got to understand that God is shaping and molding us every single day. And, and I'm a firm believer that nothing happens by coincidence. And with that being said, I don't think it's a coincidence that you're in this place this morning. It's not by mistake. God, you know, some of those things that, you know, that are broken inside of us, a lot of times we begin to blame ourselves for it. And we begin to say, well, you know, I shouldn't have did this or I shouldn't have said that. And that may be the case, but stop beating yourself up about it. We all make mistakes. And we serve a God of love, but we also serve a God of grace and mercy. It says in 1 Peter 5, 10 through 11, it says, But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, that's what he wants to do for us. He wants to take our sufferings. He wants to take our pain. He wants to take our hurt. And he wants to make it into something beautiful. That's right. And he can do it. But we've got to be able to, to put it in his hands. And I want you to know that, you know, some of you in this place might be, you know, thinking inside your mind, or the devil might be lying to somebody this morning and say, well, you know what, you, you messed up too bad. There ain't no coming back from, from what you've done or possibly what you're doing right now. I want you to know that's a lie. That's a lie. It's a lie. Straight from hell. Because it says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, it says, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. See, God, he will work through whatever weakness you got. Whatever it is. I was talking with somebody uh, last week, and, and we got to talking about, I've heard some messages on this before, but I got to talking about how, you know, Moses began to, you know, make excuses, and he's, you know, beginning to tell God, well, you know, I, I can't leave these people because, you know, I don't speak well, I'm slow of speech, and I don't have the words. God said, you know what, I'll take care of that. I'll take care of it. So stop making excuses. Just begin to walk. Yes. Wherever God's calling you, yes. just begin to walk down that path and trust in Him. Yes. I begin to think about that. Uh, anybody seen the show Undercover Boss? Oh, yeah. By Show of Hands? Anybody seen that? Always liked that show. Um, I don't know if they still do it or not, but I've all, I always thought it was funny. Um, one of the things that I thought was funny about it was the, you know, costume and stuff, you know, the, the disguises and uh, some of, like, the names and stuff they did. But for those of y'all that don't know the show, the boss or the owner of the company would disguise themselves as regular staff members, and they would go down and they would work with the staff members. And this would oftentimes lead to them you know, changing the way that they did things. And a lot of times the reason that was was because when they got down there around the people, they began to see things that they didn't even know was a problem because they were experiencing it for themselves. And 
They did this so they could also better understand the people as well. How awesome is it that we serve a God that said, you know what? I'm going to robe myself in flesh and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to be with my people. Yes, and not only am I going to be with them, but he's going to be tempted and tried in every single way that we were. So I want you to know this morning that you might be thinking, well, you know, God, God probably doesn't understand my problem. I want you to know he does. He does. He's also got more than enough power to take whatever it is you're going through and change that situation. It says in Hebrews 4 and 15, it says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like, like as we are, yet without sin. See, not only did he come down here and experience temptation and, and all the things that we experience. He set the example for her how we are supposed to act and react right there in those moments. You know, I'm going to be real this morning. You know, there, there's times that my emotions get the best of me, even still. And I'm working on that. I'm still a work in progress. I thought I handled myself pretty good yesterday because for some reason my tickets wouldn't work when I was trying to get into the bins and... And I had to bring some staff member over there, and you know, I just, man, I thought I did pretty good. Then I, I was proud of myself. You know? But good, thank you, Mom. The old Levi, I would have started to get a little upset after about you know, two minutes. We stood there for about ten, and I kept my cool. But I began to think about you know yesterday, even through that. You know, I know we were kind of joking about it, but. I'm not the same person I was. That's right. I'm not the same person I was, you know, six months ago. That's right. yeah. Or maybe a week ago. Because God is constantly shaping and molding me and working on me. And we've got to allow Him to do that to That's us. Right. Yeah. We've got to allow Him to shape and mold us. That's right. And Jesus came down here. And He walked this earth. And He started to gather a following. Well, when they went to go arrest him in the garden, I remember Peter pulled a sword and chopped the dude's ear off, right? That would have been me. I'm being serious right now. You know, if if you came and tried to arrest the person that I knew, you know, I, I walked on water with the guy. I see him feed the 5,000. I know he's the Messiah, and you're about to come and arrest him? Oh, no. I'm about to cut your ear off. Or something. You know, Peter was caught up in the emotions because he loved Jesus. But I love how Jesus handled the situation. Jesus just, he looked at Peter and he says, you know what? Those who live by the sword die by the sword. And not only that, he took the guy's ear and he put it back on. He attached it back to his body. Because there was something broken and he had the power to fix it. You know, whatever it is you've got broken this morning, he can do it. He knows our infirmities. He knows our brokenness because he's walked in our shoes. See, Jesus experienced family conflict, rejection, betrayal, loneliness, hunger. And we've got to understand that, you know, we're going to be broken at times. And there's this saying that, go, that it goes like this, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, please. But I'm pretty sure it says, it's okay to not be okay. Has anybody heard that before? Yes, sir. It's the truth. It's okay not to be okay. What's not okay is to settle for not being okay. And to remain in that state and in that place of not being okay when God's saying, you know what? I didn't, I didn't go and die on the cross for you to remain in this valley. I'm calling you somewhere else. He wants to do something, but we've got to allow him to do something. He wants to move, but we have to allow him to move. It says in 1 Peter 1, 18-19, 
For you know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life, inherited from the fathers, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. See, he thought you were worthy enough for him to go and die for you, for him to shed his blood for you. And if you think for one minute that you're not worthy of him coming down and being able to mend you and put you back together, that's another lie. That's what the devil wants you to believe. Because God doesn't intend for you to be broken. He doesn't intend for you to remain broken. As I said, you might be there for a season. You might be there until he gets ready to pull you out of there. But you know what? That's why we have to trust in God. Just like that song says, we have to trust in him and understand, you know what? If I'm in this fire, if I'm in this brokenness, and, and, and I give it to him, then there's a reason that I'm still here. There's a reason that I'm, I'm still in this place. You know, Jesus, he died on that cross so that redemption would be made possible. And that word redeem, you know, was originally used in referencing, you know, to purchasing a slave's freedom. They were redeemed. And on the cross, Jesus freed us from the slavery of sin, yes. from the slavery of death. And on the cross, through him dying on that cross, he gave us the power to choose life over death for ourselves. And he can take our broken and sometimes empty lives and he can cover them with grace and he can fill them with his purpose for your life. And the Bible, you know, it's, it's full of people that were, you know, they were used by God, not in spite of their brokenness, but through their brokenness. Think about that. Not in spite, but through. See, God, he can use whoever he wants to. You have to be willing to. And obedient to say, God, use me. Take my brokenness, put it back together, and make something beautiful. You know, there's, there's going to be a lot of former broken people in heaven. And I hope to be one of them. Because there was a time in my life that I was broken. And God... He set me back on his path. And you know, when, when he ascended into the heavens, he told all those followers, he said, I'm going to send a comforter to you. I'm going to send, sometimes it calls it the comforter, sometimes it call, calls it the helper. But what it was, was his spirit. And his spirit dwells inside of each and every single one of us. And he's given you the power to overcome anything that can come against your life. Amen. He's given you that power. It says in Romans 8, 26, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Has anybody ever just been so tore up or in a situation that you were so unfamiliar with or or you were so helpless that you said, I don't even know how to fix this. And you just didn't even have the words for it. Yes. I want you to know that Holy Spirit can get you through that. And you don't even have to say words at all. <laughs> and I began to think about it. You know, that, that valley of Baca, the valley of tears. You know, that's what we need to have at the altar sometimes. Because it doesn't... It doesn't have to be you coming up and saying some fancy prayer or something like that. Sometimes it's just about hitting your knees and letting the tears roll and saying, you know what? I'm done. I'm giving it to God. Sometimes that's what it takes. And I want you to know, I'm not just talking to the ladies in this place. Men, I don't care what your daddy said. 
I don't care what your granddaddy said or, or your buddy at work. It's okay for us to cry. In fact, it's healthy. It's healthy for us to let, let it out. Now, I'm an emotional person, so it's a little easier for me. You know, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. You know, it doesn't take much, you know, for me to start crying. I mean, I've been watching TV commercials one time, you know, and started crying. I'm like, Man, that was good. <laughs> you know? But I want you to know it's, it's okay. It's okay to shed those tears. And the reason it's okay is it's okay to be in that battle. But it's not okay to remain in that battle. Because God wants to take you somewhere new. And God wants to bless you with something new that you never could have imagined before. He's got something amazing for you. You know, I begin to think about, you know, how hard it was for Job. You know, Job, he went through so much. But it says in Job 23 and 10, it says, But he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come out as gold. See, Job right there in, in the moment, in the, in the fire, in the storm, he understood, you know what? i got to be here for a reason. And I'm just going to keep on following God until he makes me pure as gold. And I love that, you know, we started out with David. We started out with that psalm, that verse in Psalms. I love what David says in Psalms 30 and 5. He says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes, I want you to know that however bad your situation may seem, the sun is going to rise again. Yes. And God is going to make all things new. Now, I'm going to be real with you. Is it okay if I be real with you this morning? Yes, There's times that God doesn't intend for us to get our healing down here, but if we remain faithful, we'll get it up there. We'll get it when we get to glory. And you know what? That's just that's just fine by me. That's fine by me. I just want to make it. I just want to make it there again in His midst and His presence and stand before Him. But that shouldn't affect our praise. Our, our situation shouldn't affect our worship. Because we should worship Him in the valley just like we do on the mountaintop. And I don't know about y'all, and, and maybe I'm a little messed up inside, and I probably am. I tend to praise Him a little harder in the valley. I tend to cling to Him a little harder, you know, a little tighter in the valley. Because I understand, you know what? I'm not strong enough that He is. Let's stand this morning.
It says, a man who endures trials is blessed. Because when he passes the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. I want you to know this morning that God's got something great for us, waiting for us in heaven. But if you allow him to, I've got a feeling that he wants to bless you right down here. And he wants to give us a little heaven on earth right here this morning. Amen. And nobody else was looking. I saw the hands that went up. We're going to open up this altar here in a second. And I want you to know that you are welcome to come down here. You're not going to be judged. Nobody's going to look at you and say, I wonder what they're going through. We're not here to do that. In fact, what we would like to do is we would like to pray with you. We would like to help strengthen and support you and let you know that you've got people here at Mount Pleasant that love you. Because one of the things we were talking about last night at the dinner table was I, I hate it when I hear that people won't step back in a church because they experience church hurt because this is supposed to not be a place of hurt. This is supposed to be a place of healing and restoration. And God has to do it for somebody in this place is doing So whatever you got going on this morning, just know that God's mindful of it. And you don't have to worry about anybody judging you in this place. Just come give it to them. That's all we ask. I'd love to see God do something amazing in your life this morning. Let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you for your word. God, I thank you for your presence that I've already felt in this place. God, I pray that your spirit, dear Lord, will sweep across this sanctuary right now. God, you know the hand that was raised. I'll go a step further, God. You know the person that struggled with brokenness that couldn't even find it within themselves to raise their hand because the devil has lied to them so much. God, I pray that you would begin to speak to these people right now, God. Speak to us. God, I pray that you would just let us rise up in courage and take back our lives, dear Lord, and put our lives in your hands so that you can take them and mend them back together, God. And you can take that brokenness and you can make something beautiful out of it. God, we thank you in advance for what you're about to do in this place. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This altar is open, friend. I urge you. Please don't remain in that state of brokenness. Come give it to him this morning.